It's 7 a.m. and I'm exhausted, and I'm stepping as gently as I can across these creaky wooden floors with very little foundation underneath, like so little that if I make enough sound, I might hear an animal scurrying away beneath the wood, which would make even more noise, so I'm trying to be extra light, and this is difficult because I put on a lot of weight at this point. Five months ago, I was preeclamptic and two weeks overdue with my firstborn daughter, Abigail. It's 2006, and I just graduated in May five months ago. Yes, I literally started having contractions during finals, but I was determined after spending the last nine months through morning sickness and a preeclamptic pregnancy that I was going to finish that final. And after the six week healing period, I hit the job force working ungodly hours that people who weren't new grads didn't wanna work. But this was my day off and I want to see my baby girl while she's still sleeping. And this 650 square foot wooden box that we lived in at the time had a layout of my bedroom, a shared bathroom, and then a nursery on the other side. So there were two old creaky doors that I had to make it through before I could get into the nursery, which made it almost impossible to ever catch her sleeping. So I finally make it, and as I push the second door open to a crack, I can already see her propped on her forearms and a perfect 90 degree angle wide blue eyes staring straight at me. Not a sound. She looked like she had been awake for a while. And this was common for Abigail because Abigail was a content, quiet baby. Chloe has not been that. In the delivery room where I had Chloe, the nurse put on the required viewing material for all parents. Half of them were about breastfeeding and the other half were about something called purple crying, which is basically a new term for having a colicky baby. But the purple is an acronym of symptoms where the P stands for the peak of crying being at two months and then lessening from months three to five, the U being unexpected or not provoked, the R resists soothing, the P being a pain-like face, the L being long lasting and the E being in the evenings. These training videos share how having a purple crier can wreak havoc on the parents because nothing will soothe a purple crier when they're purple crying. For those parents, it can lead to exhaustion and temporary insanity. The night after I delivered Chloe, she cried until 6 a.m. Matt sat up with her in the lounge chair so that I could rest, and he said to me, I think we have a purple crier. And I disagreed. I said she probably just needs a day or so to adjust to being earthside. Then she proceeded to purple cry every day thereafter, often from 7 to 7.30 p.m. until 4 or 5 in the morning, loudly and inconsolably. Now, don't get me wrong. She has been an amazing baby. She's happy. She's soothed by us. And the purple crying has pretty much stopped now that she's five months old. But up until that point, every evening, she would scream and wail inconsolably had been fed, had been changed, swaddled, rocked, all of the things. Like we're holding her in our arms, trying to calm her down, walking her around the house. There was just something baked into her that hated evening times. And I share this because I know that I'm not alone. I watch the videos in the hospital. There are a lot of parents who go through this and maybe are totally unprepared. I had two daughters prior to Chloe and had never experienced anything like that before. From this experience, I've learned three things. Number one, every baby is different. To steal from Forrest Gump, babies are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Number two, I'm a much more patient person than I was 17 years ago. I gotta say, I've been handling this really well and so has Matt. And number three, my love for a minimalist lifestyle could possibly be overridden by my desire to make a baby stop wailing. So today I'm going to share with you what we own for a colicky infant, what our setup is, how we make it all work, and you know the things that I went back on since the previous videos that I did when I was still pregnant and I was planning my baby registry and setting up the nursery. When we're talking about essential baby items, your baby needs very little, like very little, especially when they're newborns and they're not even like doing tummy time and all of that stuff yet. But the thing we sometimes don't think about is what will you need? And these are two very different things because they're solving two very different problems or pain points. And what you need might be different for each of your kids. So here's our current situation. If you saw the nursery planning video that I did a few months back, then you know that we have this adorable nursery cohabitat situation going on in my 15 year old's room. We haven't used that yet and we probably won't for a while. We won't do it until we know that Chloe can sleep through the night because we want to, of course, respect Gracie, my 15 year old space in there. So she's been sharing a room with us. This means that most of Chloe's stuff is generally in our room. So this is what it looked like before. 
and I'll show you what it looks like now that we have some extra items in here. Now, when I was planning for our nursery, you'll notice that I left off things like a rocking chair and a baby swing and things that I felt were just not essential. And those were a couple of the things that we went back on after trying night after night to find new ways of soothing her to go to sleep. And I've tried some different setups inside of my space with these things. You'll notice we have the snuggle me that's on the floor under the desk now. There was a time where we tried to set it in the closet it on top of the dresser and make that its home. It just didn't last like that because inevitably something else would be set on top of the dresser and then we wouldn't have a spot to put the snuggle me. So recently when I asked you guys what you wanted to hear more of from me, a lot of you wanted to know, well, what's changed since you've had a baby? How are you able to still maintain minimalism and keep down all the stuff and the clutter with having a newborn and now an infant in the house? And so I'm just going to take you on a little tour of our space here, show you what we have, how we have everything set up, how we're able to keep down the clutter as much as possible, even though some days it does feel like, you know, if this is my comfort zone, I'm definitely up here at the peak of my comfort zone with the amount of stuff that we have. I'm somebody who really likes to keep things bare boned and I've had to compromise on that in order to find life satisfaction with the crying infant like I talked about previously. So just kind of like working together with my space and this extra information and a few extra items that we have, this is what we have come up with. By the way, this video is sponsored by Aura Frames. If you watch my videos a lot, you've probably seen them many times before, even though they weren't sponsored because they are just awesome frames and it's what we use for all of our photos. Actually, let me go ahead and just tell you about them now. We got this frame as a wedding gift and we loved it so much that we bought one for Matt's parents for Christmas. It's so easy to set up. You can even set it up for someone else, which makes it an awesome gift. You can pre-upload pictures without breaking into the box using this tab on the back of the box. It shows you how to download the app, upload pictures, and even connect it to Wi-Fi for them so that they literally just have to plug it in. The coolest thing about this frame is that you can share your frame link with other people. So we have access to Matt's parents frame and we're constantly uploading pictures of Chloe for them straight to their frame. You can do this from anywhere in the world. And Aura has unlimited cloud storage. So you could upload your entire family box of photos and albums and videos with no charge or limit. The image quality is insane. It looks like actual prints. Honestly, this video doesn't even do it justice. And we were so excited because we didn't even realize initially that the frames play videos. Like take a look at this. <laughs> This is the Carver mat frame, and you can use the link in my description and my code Mia Danielle to get $30 off plus free shipping through Mother's Day, May 14th. Enjoy. Here are a few of the things that we do still keep in the nursery. Obviously, we have her crib, which we aren't really using yet, although we've started trying to do a little tummy time in here just this past few weeks. We also keep a few extra items here in her closet, including all of her clothes. So we're not storing her clothes in our room. They still have her side of the closet. Otherwise, we have her extra bin of blankets and swaddles, as well as a couple of items that we've been gifted that we haven't used just yet. So this is Chloe's bin in our bedroom. Isn't that adorable? That was made by one of Abigail's friend's mom. She's digging anything that is crinkly right now. So like her favorite thing is literally this bag. It's like a chip bag, it crinkles. This is her favorite toy. <laughs> Sophie the giraffe. It's like all over the place. They have a whole row of them in Bye Bye Baby. This little thing is like $30, but she loves it. So this is pretty much where we keep all of the rest of her toys in this bin. Um, a lot of these really cool things came from this place, Love Every. And they have just really neat wooden kind of natural toys. Also, this book came from them. And it's pretty awesome too. When we do tummy time, this can entertain her for quite a long time because each page has something different for her to do. Like, look at herself. Told you she loves the crinkle pages. Got a lot of those. This is actually really neat because it's specific for babies who are three to four months old. And so got a little squeak toy, which really confuses Charlie. It also came with this mirror and a couple of books. 
So these snuggle me's are pretty pricey, I would say, for what they are, which is a curated pillow. But it does have like a little sling that keeps them feeling cuddled and kind of held. But we actually use this thing probably more than any other item. I'm gonna go feed her. We'll pick this up in a bit. This bassinet is by Design Dua. It's really cool. It's like a Moses basket, so you, you're not supposed to lift it with them in it, but this does come out if we want it to, and it also is on rockers. Usually when she's ready to sleep, as soon as we put her in it, she's already turned over onto her tummy. She's definitely a tummy sleeper. So this thing has actually been a pretty awesome little asset. Um, this is something that I, my oldest daughter loved when she was a baby, and so it was kind of fresh on my mind as something to try. So we've made the right side of our desk here kind of the changing station. This is the actual changing pad slash basket, kind of a Moses basket thing. It actually has a cloth leaf that goes on top of it, but that's dirty right now, so that's in the wash. Probably the thing that would set Chloe off the most when she was a newborn was being cold, and especially having cold wipes would just really set her off. So within the first few days of bringing her home, we said we have to get a wipe warmer, and we did. We've been using it ever since, so this thing has been great. We keep her special basket down here that has the diapers and her sleep snuggle and her tummy time blanket. And you'll notice off to the right of the changing station is the diaper pill that I said I wasn't gonna get because I had such a terrible experience with the diaper genies. This one actually works really well. You just step in on the bottom, push the diaper in, close the lid, and it twists as you close the lid. This one is a munchkin, just like the wipes that we have over here are also by munchkin. And then I think that the swing that we bought secondhand back there that I'll show you in a second is also a munchkin. It just happened out that way because we found the wipes and and they worked so well, so we decided to try that for the diaper pail, and it worked out really well, and so we decided to go with the same brand for the swing. Now, we weren't gonna get a swing. That was on our list of things that we just weren't gonna get, because in my mind, the swings were like big things that would swing forward and backward. I'd never actually seen anything like these side-to-side -side swings, but people kept recommending that we get a swing, saying, you know, like when we had kids, this was the only thing that would make them stop crying. We bought it secondhand, and so we got a really good price for it. Everything is dial controlled, and so it doesn't go super fast. This is five speed, which is as high as it goes. So that's as fast as it goes. She likes it. I mean, usually she'll just kind of chill out in it when she's listening to her Encanto songs or yeah, feeling already soothed. It hasn't been great for making her stop crying. So if she's already crying and we put her in this, it's not like a miracle that's gonna make her stop crying, which is what we had been hoping for. The bouncer that we initially had, that we still have, is in the dining room now. So it's kind of like our lower level place to sit her if we're in the living room or in the dining room when we eat, she sits there while we eat. It had no automatic bouncer in it. There was no battery operation or mechanical thing. You had to sit there with your foot or with your hand and bounce it in order for it to move. We wanted something that would just do that automatically for us. So this is a little more pacifying than if we were to just sit her in the bouncer and not be there bouncing it. I don't think that she'll be able to use this very much longer. I do like that it doesn't take up a lot of space and actually this comes apart. I can pull this off and slide it under the bed, which was one of the reasons that we got it. But of course, since we use it every day, we don't ever actually slide it under the bed. And so the rest of what we have is really geared more toward floor play. So we can use this Snuggle Me or we've used her changing pad in the past, which gets her up a little bit higher so she could reach these things more easily. Now that she's five months old, she's able to reach them with just some extension chains like we have attached. We pulled some toys from different places. So like the round ball that she's holding, for example, actually came with the jumper, the doorway jumper. And the chains that that's attached to came 
as a separate gift from one of my daughters. And so we kind of mix match things just to make it to the level that we need it to be. But this has been a really good thing, especially in the morning time. She really likes to just sit and stare and grab at her different things in the morning time. And she'll let us know when she starts getting tired of it. And if it's cold, we put her little adorable swaddle on her, which has been game changing at nighttime. So we have used the regular swaddles and the swaddle wraps like the halos, but this thing is great because it's super warm and she hasn't outgrown it as fast as she did the halo. So the halo, she outgrew pretty fast, but this you can put on over clothes. You just need to make sure that they're wearing socks. Again, it wasn't something that was bought in the store. This was something that was made for us, but has been really convenient if you're able to find anything like it. Sometimes we set the tummy time up in the bedroom. The other half of the time we set it up in the living room. I'm gonna go ahead and get her set up here in the bedroom. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this little mini tour. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will chat with you guys next week.